asked me as a student. So I was wondering when the government were going to be making a, like an international passport or allowing me to come back after all this time. Ah, oh, the vexed issue of passports, Nadine. Ellie, good evening to you. Ellie, we are not planning to have uh, uh, passports or, or international passports. What we're looking at is to make sure that people can access their own personal uh, vaccination uh, records. Uh, and of course, you can do that already uh, on the NHS app if you uh, uh, log on and look at your uh, GP and uh, get your history because the GP will have your vaccination history. We ha it's all held in the National Immunization Vaccination uh, System. Uh, but uh, what we are looking at is if other countries, uh, like, for example, with the yellow fever uh, certificate, uh, require people to show a certificate uh, of a vaccination so we can try and make it as easy as possible for people to have that certificate uh, of uh, their vaccination. Uh, and, of course, uh, people can now have, or well, they have to have a pre-departure test and then a test after two days and a test after eight days of quarantine. If they're coming from a, a, a country of concern, a red country, then they have to, if they're residents in the UK or UK nationals, they have to quarantine in a hotel, otherwise they can't travel here. And of course, otherwise, if they're not from those countries, they can quarantine at home, but still have to have the three tests, pre-departure, two days uh, after, and then after eight days uh, of uh, arrival. Do, do you accept, though, that the messaging on these vaccine passports has um, not been entirely consistent from the government? Where You, you said uh, last week that you weren't looking at vaccine passports, and then Dominic Raab on Sunday to my colleague Tom Swarbrick in the studio uh, said that you were. Boris Johnson said today that you're not, that you've been consistent on this, but why isn't the message getting through to your colleagues in, ca in Cabinet? No, I, I think actually um, sometimes people have in different interpretations of what, what it means to have a vaccine passport. If, if we're talking about vaccine certificates where some countries will, as the Prime Minister has said, they may require them to travel to those countries, then we want to make those accessible to the individual. Uh, yeah, but Dom but Dominic, Dominic Raab was talking about um, shops or restaurants requiring evidence that you've had a vaccine before you can come through their doors. No, that's not uh, what we are um, uh, looking to do. I think what, you, as the Prime Minister has said, you'll find will happen is these uh, rapid testing uh, uh, technologies where, like you know, with the pre-departure test, if you're able to, to have rapid testing, because that's the most reliable way of uh, knowing if somebody uh, has got uh, uh, COVID, uh, of course, we don't yet know the impact of the vaccination programme on transmission or, of course, on infection. Now, the, the early data from Israel is really positive. Some of the early data from the Oxford team is really positive. But until we have uh, our, you know, our own Public Health England uh, reliable data from the two big uh, 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 you know, surveys that they're carrying out, one with frontline health workers, one with uh, people, residents and care homes, uh, uh, we don't know the impact of the vaccines on transmission uh, yet. So it would be, I think, uh, it, it's wrong to, to assume uh, that the best thing is testing at the moment. And I think the Prime Minister's right. Uh, the, the future will probably be around rapid testing as well as a national vaccination programme and probably a revaccination programme in the way we do flu vaccines every year. But the, the, the Telegraph have just posted a story literally 34 minutes ago saying that UK cinemas have become striking deals to use vaccine passports that could allow them to reopen their doors to those who've already received a COVID-19 jab. Now, um, is that something the government's going to try and stop? Or do you think, well, that, that's a private sector decision. They can do what they like. Well, all I would say, one, it's obviously a private sector decision, but um, we don't yet know the impact on transmission of being vaccinated. So... Uh, you know, the the cinemas need, need need to think that through. If you don't know the 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 you know whether the individual who's been vaccinated um, uh, uh, you know can still transmit the the uh, virus, then uh, it does slightly make it problematic for that particular headline or that particular idea. Much better uh, to uh, look at rapid testing 
uh, that, for example, a lot of employers are now using weird being tested twice a week in Parliament with the lateral flow tests. The NHS uh, workers have been doing it for uh, uh, months now. And of course, um, uh, residential care home workers have also been doing that rapid testing. Uh, and we're making it available through local government as well, uh, as well to small business. We've just announced that we make it available to businesses of 50 employees. Uh, it was only available to larger businesses earlier on. So I think uh, rapid testing is a, is, is a much better way, of course, combined with a national vaccination programme uh, that we will carry on delivering.